And this is Trap Red with another Trap Red YouTube video. For any of you that haven't never seen me without hairs on my face, this is what Mogly Mug looks like. That's why I don't usually shave. But anyway, you're stuck with what you got and get what you get. So anyway, I gotta get a little bit more barbering this line don't match this line and i got a little screwed up here so maybe i get my daughter to even out my stuff i'm not going for the peter gabriel you know big v thing but i am going for kind of like a you know more of a john trudeau kind of american native american look just kind of you know try to represent from my home district that would be Baldwinsville, Syracuse, Onondaga County, uh, Iroquois Nation, Mohicans. I grew up in that area. Uh, now want to see a nice homegrown bug? Here check this one out. Look at this. Is this nice or what? Look, that's some good stuff right there, baby. Some a tasty bug. Um, yeah, it's out in the hills somewhere. I don't know. Don't know. They could torture me, and I still wouldn't know. <clears throat> and it's good not to know. Don't have a need to know. Anyway. Pardon me, so I'm gonna get in a smoke and we're gonna talk. Like Andrew Stanley talks about his trap line, we're gonna talk about just you know stuff in general. Because why not? I uh, decided to spend my time today more useful, so I got up early, had to take uh, the gopher trap out because dog dig was digging in there he smelled the goat with the garlic and the carrots from way underneath the ground so he dug it up and then he was playing around with it last night almost got his face in the rat trap that would have been a disaster definitely I saw him took it away from him anyways what I did today was I built a minnow trap look see minnow trap now it's got a door in the back taking out the fish it just swings open I'll show you get this little piece of number nine wire to just kind of ease it I haven't put a handle on it to open it to open it and I need to make it a little better anyway it doesn't really open all the way because I didn't hinge it right but you can see, it opens wide enough to get the minnows out. So there you go. That's the whole thing. You can see it all the way down to through the funnel. Hopefully, look. And I use tie wraps. See me? Yeah, I use tie wraps. These are tie wraps, and I use tie wraps to plastic tie wraps to just kind of quick tie it. You know, if you were making it for keeps with some heavier mesh, you might want to use um, uh, some different type of uh, wire mesh, maybe a uh, quarter inch less than that. I'm not sure I'm going to go down to Lowe's and shop around and see what what might, because I, ha I know how big the minnows are, so... I'm gonna look for some material. This will work though. This is just aluminum screen and it's pretty cheap, you know? <laughs> so, anyways, you just have to kind of squirm this, squirm this door. I made it out of number nine wire, just squirm it in there so it holds, you know, tight. It doesn't have to be, it's not rocket science, they're minnows. So there you go. And then this is a 
tie loop that I've made for string uh, for my cord to stake it off. And then what you do is you just put your bait. You, you can load your bait up through your funnel. Just throw in a bunch of marshmallows or breadcrumbs, you know, old bread, and there it is. It's a funnel trap for minnows. It's pretty simple. You, I made it out of aluminum screen, tie wraps, and an old a tomato, um, tomato support for plants. A plant support. So, let me um, let me pick the camera up and I'll show you a better angle of it. There it is. This is the whole thing. So that's pretty cool. I'm anxious to kind of give it a try. And I looked at those uh, tie wraps. I was gonna trim them and then I thought, no, leave them the way they are because they kind of will attract the, the bait fish because they look like they could be something that you might want to eat if you were a fish. See, so I just, there it is. It's just pretty much looking down into it. And it's a looming screen looking down the uh, seam. And I just kind of uh, squirmed around it a little bit and with a, uh, twirled it around the edges with a, some dikes, you know, to tighten it up. And then you use your fingers. I would advise using gloves if you're going to do it, though, because uh, uh, the aluminum screen will poke your fingers and that hurts. It's like getting little needles stuck in you. So, uh, anyway, that's what was on the project uh, agenda for the first thing this morning. <clears throat> Build a, the minnow trap for fishing. Now, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get my fishing license right away, although it's been raining, and that's nice because it's washing fish down, and they're there. And you should fish when the fish are there, so I, I might end up investing in it fishing license forty seven dollars and oh one cents not bad hunting license same thing forty seven oh one and I get five bobcat tags for hunting only hunting can't export them but you can you know keep them for yourself uh, tan them use them um, five for three dollars and twenty five cents each so it's sixteen dollars and 25 cents for five and the limits five which is not bad so for a reasonable price sixty three dollars and I think it's 26 cents I figured out something like this for 63 26 I can get the uh, Bob five Bobcat tags and the hunting license so well, that's pretty good now as far as hunting if I want to hunt upland game birds which are basically mountain quail valley quail rough grouse in certain areas I think they're open sage grouse I'm not sure I don't, we don't have any around here and uh, pheasant and uh, ringneck pheasant and uh, wild turkeys now, wild turkey, that's something. But I think, I'm not sure if you need a separate tag for that or not. They got everything lined out. You know, you start hunting big game, you're going to have to put out money for tags. Like a deer tag's 30 bucks. Bear tag's, I think it's $44. Something like that, which is, for a bear? Come on, that's, that's cheap. And the only reason they sell them that cheap is because we have a pretty good healthy supply of bears here. I don't I've never eaten bear and that's a lot of meat and I can't see just wasting a bear 500 pound you know, plus boar black bear you know just can't see doing it not for the hell of it.
Although, you know, if I was looking for a nice bear skin coat, you think about it and you go, well, hey, bear skin rug, bear skin coat for $44 or whatever. That's a, that's a, that's a hell of a deal. But you have to have the wherewithal to, you know, pack them out. And I don't. So there is where it begins and ends. Now, if I was going to make camp up there for the winter, snowbound, you know, I might take a bear out, tan his hide and <clears throat> smoke his meat, especially if I had dogs to feed and stuff with me, you know, nothing wrong with good bear meat. There's plenty of it, you know, but I just, they stink. Uh, I got slimed by a bear, and there's an odor to them, man. There's a musk to them, so their meat's got to have some gaminess as well. I don't know. I have to ask Ted about that. I don't eat bear. I haven't ever, but I could. Venison is, uh, it's all right. If you don't prepare it right, it will. Uh, you'll get urine on it. It will. It will. The meat will be spoiled. It tastes like piss. You got to make sure it's fresh. You got to prepare it right. You can't screw around. You got to butcher it up fresh. You know, and take the necessary precautions to save the meat from spoilage. Otherwise, it's no good. But if it's prepared right, you know, venison is good. It's healthy. You know. You, you eat, put it this way, you could eat a whole porterhouse steak and, and you're not going to get the vitamins and nutrition and bazing out of that that you're going to get out of a little <laughs> six or eight ounce venison steak, you know, you, you just not. Eat a couple mouthfuls of venison and, and it's like eating a whole plate of steak. So... Anyway, I just don't have a way to get the wild game from there down to here. And I'm not going to pack it on my back, although I could. I'd have to smoke it. So, I'm more interested in getting a hunting license for um, predator hunting. Predator calling with my, um, with my new bighorn predator caller. I mean, I, that's what we're calling it, bighorn. It's, uh, it's a pulse of 25 watt MP3 uh, megaphone standard issue. Price is going up at the end of the month to uh, 40 bucks. So, wholesale cost. And that's another reason why our price is $79.95 for the whole thing because by the time I get done buying everything and I just want people to know because people are rightfully you know cautious and shop uh, conscious you know price conscious or whatever but the service I'm offering and I told this other guy is the mp3 programming a lot of people don't know how to do that or what to do or they just want something with some good sounds that they don't they don't know what's good or what's bad and so you know they want some clear sounds and they want something that will work so that's what I do I program the mp3 and uh, you get the unit drop shipped to you from the manufacturer the wholesaler and uh, you get the I think it comes with the one-year warranty and the actual uh, flash drive is a five-year warranty so there's just there's no, no issues with the equipment at all. If you got any problem with the equipment, you um, got 30 days to send it back to the uh, distributor. And they'll credit your account or exchange it for a new one, whatever, if it's damaged. Um, it's just that simple. It's risk-free. It's You're not even like, the only thing you're buying from me is the software. I sell you the software, and, and what I'm charging you is 20 bucks, and that counts with shipping and everything I mean when you do the math that's what 
that's what it comes down to because you're getting free shipping on the